<laughs> what is up you guys welcome to my youtube channel if you're new here my name is Mackenzie if you're not new thank you for coming back so as you can see I've got a little bit of a jungle going on here and I'm also wearing a jungle which let me show you guys this really quick actually I got another one of my artist outfits okay hold on how friggin cool is this I'm literally wearing plants not wearing black because I'm wearing plants. I'm totally fine with that. So I got this one on Amazon per usual and they also have it in so many other patterns, solid colors. I definitely want to go back and order the one in black because this is so comfortable. The all black one is the original one that sold me and then I saw this pattern. I'm like, oh my God, I can literally be plants. So I ordered this one first to see how I like the fabric, if I like the fit. And I do, so I gotta order the other ones, but I'll have this link down below if you guys wanna order it too. Anyways, I've got a jungle in front of me, so I need, just have a few plants that need to be repotted. I wanna put this in a actual hanging pot. I had this in a macrame hanger, but it's just getting a little bit too out of control to be in a macrame hanger now at this point. So I'm going to put it in one of these pots that you can attach the chains to. I've got two of these. These are also from Amazon. I'll link them down below if you guys wanna find them. So I'm going to put that in a hanger. I'm also going to put both of these red marantas together in one of those bigger hangers as well. I've got to repot this begonia bergamosa exotica because it's just so big and top heavy now that it keeps falling over. It's just getting damaged. So I've got to put it in a little bit bigger of a pot just to get some more weight behind here. So hopefully it'll stop toppling over and I won't have to support it with something. And unfortunately, the same thing is going on with this metal head. So I don't really particularly want to repot this one, but I have to because it's just so top heavy. So I want to get it in a little bit of a heavier pot so I don't have to worry about it falling over. So that's the plan for today's video. And we're just gonna talk while I do it. I'm gonna do some repotting and just talk to you guys. I have no idea what I'm gonna be talking about. We'll find out together. So if that sounds like something you're into, let's get started. Alrighty guys, so first things first, let's just get the Neon Pothos and the Red Marantas repotted because those are both going in those hangers. And I think those are gonna be easiest to repot. So let me just move these out of the way real quick. All right, and this will be the first one that we're going to repot. So, like I said, I don't really have a exact plan on what I was gonna to talk to you guys about. I was kind of thinking about talking about pet peeves as a full-time glass artist. Just the weird things that happen once you become a full-time artist, whether that's with strangers that you meet, customers that you know, family members, whatever it is. Just some, people do weird things when you're an artist. It's strange. Oh, cool. So again, these are from Amazon and they came with these S hooks. They come with these hooks that go into the ceiling. There's no anchors or anything, but then they also come with the black top chain and they just hook right into this pot, which is super cool. So it's got a already attached drainage pan. It's got the three holes and then you just hook them up with these little hooks. Cool. I mean, of course I wish these were black, but they didn't have any that were black and these are the exact size that I was looking for, so. Like I said, it can be like random people that kind of do these things. It can be family members, it can be customers, but before I even start talking about it, I wanna pre preface all of this by saying I love and appreciate all of my customers. They all mean so much to me. All of them collectively have gotten me to where I've gotten. I love all of my family members, but this is my job. And I think, I think a lot of people think that I'm just like making arts and crafts at my house and that it's not my actual full-time job. That's extremely difficult work. So just for an example here, like every family member or so many family members just expect things and they expect things for free. Why? I don't know. Again, it's like, in what world is it okay to ask somebody to work for free? I don't get it. And I think just because I'm an artist that people think it's okay to have that kind of an attitude, which obviously it's not. I mean, granted, of course, I wish I could give all of my family members anything that they wanted all the time, but reality is 
everybody around me expects that and beyond being just a stained glass artist because i am creative and i'm an artist in a bunch of different areas everybody expects things all the time outside of stained glass so for an example somebody needs something made on a cricket machine i get the call asked if i can make something on the cricket machine if something needs to be sewed somebody asked me to sew it if something needs to be painted somebody asked me to do that it's like i get it but it's all taxing on me mentally and it's just more work and I think people forget that when you're a full-time artist you work a whole lot more than the average person works I don't have a normal nine to five I don't I don't get off time because I have the privilege to work from home and be self-employed and be my own artist I have to make many sacrifices in many other places and one of those is not taking time off you just don't get that option when you're a self-employed artist. You have to take all the work you can get while you can get it. Oh wow, I just replanted this a little while ago. I'm surprised it's already got that much of a root system. I didn't want to replant this, but it's all right, not too bad. I'm gonna have to break it down a little bit because these pots are a little bit shallower because they've got that built-in pan at the bottom. But yeah, I think family members just forget that this is my job. It is extremely difficult work. I'm not just making arts and crafts at my house for funsies. <laughs> this is what pays all of my bills. All of them. I don't have mysterious money coming in from other places. This is my full-time work. And then when it comes to customers, they, some of them, not all of them by any means. The majority of them are so kind, so understanding. But I think I've mentioned to you guys before that I have a lot of customers that are repeat buyers. I have like 50 people off the top of my head that I could probably go through and think of that have 20, 30 more pieces of mine in their home. And unfortunately, when people buy from an artist that much, I think they start to feel entitled to your work and, and entitled to your time because of that. So I think they think because they bought so much that they single-handedly single -handedly have built up my business to what it is. When reality is, I've sent 5,000 packages in the last few years and they're just a very small portion of what makes my business successful. Again, I love and I appreciate every single one of my customers, but when I already give every customer, every repeat customer, a customer that comes back, a discount, free shipping, etc., I can't add even more on just because you've purchased from me before. It's just me behind this business. So, I mean, granted, I was talking to somebody about this the other day. I don't remember who it was. Oh, I think my eyelash tech. So the girl who does my eyelash extensions. All of the time when I have repeat customers and repeat buyers, I always give them discounts, free shipping, whatever it is. But a lot of the time I never tell them or specifically say like, oh, by the way, I'm giving you free shipping. Oh, by the way, I've already taken 20% off because I just feel weird doing that. Do you know what I mean? That's to my own detriment. So I think because I don't point that out, these customers think like, why am I not getting a discount? I've already bought 10 plus pieces when reality is they have been getting them the whole time whenever they come to me or purchase things or a lot of the time if I see a repeat name that have purchased from my Etsy, not even necessarily a custom order, I will refund parts of their order all of the time. And I just don't say anything. I just, I don't know, it feels weird to say something. It's like, there's only so much I can do. I better also have a life, you know what I'm saying? But thankfully it's not often that I run into the customers like that anymore because I stopped taking custom work for the most part but the family member shit definitely so many people in your family if you're an artist you guys already know just expect it i don't know why that is people just don't respect artists in general i think which is weird it's like if somebody came to paint the outside of their house you're gonna pay them why because i'm painting something do i not get the same respect i have no idea it's strange, very, very strange to me. That's enough ranting for now. Like I said, the majority of people are fantastic and I love all of my customers, even if they do get entitled or something happens, I appreciate everybody. But just something has to be said for the way that artists in general are looked at and treated in society as a whole, I think. 
All right, that's gonna be much, much better. This thing was doing great, good love and life. And now he's probably really gonna boom. We're in growing season, super warm out, plenty of humidity in that room. Now he's gonna have some extra room to stretch his legs. But first thing I gotta do is thoroughly water this thing before I go and hang it back up. That is for sure. It is hot out, you guys. All right, so much, much better. And now he'll have plenty of room to keep growing in this pot. And again, all I've got is just a moisture control basic potting mix and added some orchid bark, perlite, and charcoal into it, just a tiny, tiny bit. Cool, it looks great. So I'm going to thoroughly soak this thing, let it completely drain out the bottom, and then go hang them back up. I'll be right back and we'll get on to the next pot. All right, this might be a little bit more tricky because I gotta cram both of these in here. At least this one's very small, and this one's packed together quite close. I don't know if I ever told you guys last year I was mowing the lawn, I think it was last year, yes, I was mowing the lawn. Zach was activated for COVID stuff, so he was gone helping, I believe, nursing homes through the military for COVID relief stuff. So he'd been gone, I had to mow the lawn, and it was late summer. And I'm pretty sure I had my headphones in at this point. I wasn't paying attention and I ran right over a very active, very established yellow jacket's nest. Now, that had never happened to me before. So at first I didn't really know what was going on. I was kind of confused, but I very quickly realized the burning and stinging I was feeling on my legs was yellow jackets. I looked down and I think I was in like, um, like an overall suit but it was shorts and then i had long black socks on just like these but they were even taller so all of the yellow jackets were just going right to the black which i later learned why and i'll tell you that in a second so they were stinging all over the socks on my legs so i had to stop the lawnmower let go and run to the front yard as fast as i could and of course it was going to be raining that day and I was too afraid to go back out there. Zach was gone, so I had to call my best friend's fiance and have him come over to come lasso my lawnmower and pull it into the front yard. That way I could put it back in the garage before it started raining out. So whatever, it was a whole ordeal. Ever since then, I've kind of been like, I don't know, like a little bit traumatized. I'm so afraid of bees. Granted, I already was. I already was very afraid of bees. I do not like them. So point of all of this is, long story long, I ended up getting a bee suit. So again, I'll show you guys this in a second, but it was the best purchase I've ever made. I just noticed earlier today, I got some white faces, of course, building a nest into the siding of my house. So the bee suit had to come out. Obviously I already sprayed them, I'm good to go. But guys, this thing is amazing. I don't know what it is. It was $37 on Amazon. You get the gloves in the full suit. But when you wear this, it's like you're invisible to bees almost. It's like they don't even see you. It is the weirdest thing. I do not f around with bees at all. This is a game changer. Like. I'm fully by myself. It's white faces building a nest out there. I just throw this on. I have normal jeans on underneath and a jean jacket on top just in case for like an extra thick layer. But last year, this is what I used when I took out the nest that actually attacked me in the lawn when I was mowing it. And I've never gotten stung. Barely do they even notice you. They haven't even tried to get me through the suit yet. It's crazy. But for 37 bucks on Amazon, if you guys have issues with bees at your house too, get one. It's so much fun. And it's worth it, 37 bucks to be a bee suit keeper for a day. It was a $40 bee suit from Amazon, of course, and it comes with the full suit, the like net mask that's attached to it, and it comes with gloves. So back then, last summer, that's how I was able to address the nest all on my own. I was able to ax it out of the ground because it was on this like, there's a four by four piece of wood that kind of makes steps in my backyard. And right underneath one of those four by fours, they had like dug it out and made their nest in there. So spraying it wasn't really taking care of it. I had to ax that spot out completely. 
So the only way I was able to do that was with this Bisu. And again, it was only 40 bucks on Amazon and it was then that I discovered how the Bisu worked. So remember when I said they were all attacking my black socks? That's because they view the black as dark animal fur, like a bear or something out in the wild. So they just attack that area. You guys know me, all I ever freaking wear is black. So how crazy is that? So they're attacking my socks. So I get the bee suit and I go outside to address it and it's like they can't even see me. It's like I'm literally invisible. I'm, I'm up in the nest and it's like they can't even see me. Being able to look at the bees, wasp, whatever it is up close like that and not get stung is wicked, wicked cool. I mean, it st sucks that I had to kill them, but I couldn't leave them there. I've got friggin' two small dogs that roam my backyard freely. I'm not letting them get stung so I can keep a raging yellow jacket's nest in the ground. So anyways, I got the bee suit. It's amazing. Figure out how it worked. Today, I'm FaceTiming Zach and I went outside for some reason and as I'm on FaceTime, my eyes like focus in on the corner of my house right here on the siding. White faced hornets or whatever the hell they're called were starting to make a nest in the side of my house so in the siding so i was probably standing out there for like i don't know five minutes not even like three minutes and just in that small amount of time i seen so many of them flying in and out of that area so i immediately got off the phone with zach because he had to go to bed anyway it was very late got the bee suit on, went out there, sprayed it, two full cans, now I don't have to worry anymore. The bee suit is literally the best investment I've ever made. 40 bucks and you can take care of your own bees. Like, and again, it's fascinating to be so up close and personal with bees like that and not get stung. It's weird, it's still scary. Like, I was um, messaging Zach I was, as I was like getting suited up and my heart was still racing, it still does because I'm just not even used to how well the suit works. I definitely suggest it. Again, I'll also link that down below. So I'll link these pots, I'll link this outfit, and I'll link the bee suit. And of course, like I've told you guys before, from now on, all of my Amazon links will be affiliate links. And again, affiliate links don't change the price of an item so just because it's an affiliate link doesn't mean it's more expensive or anything it's the same exact price it is for everyone everywhere else i just make a very very small commission off of it which if you guys want to know what the commission is on like a certain amount of money let me know and we can talk about that in my next video it's nothing it's crazy how little they give you it's like i understand how that man makes as much money as he does because he's ripping all of us off Okay, I think that's good. We can hook this one up and now I'm gonna have to do the same thing. I'm gonna put the chain on, thoroughly soak it and hang it back up. Okay, next plant up. This is probably one of my favorite plants right now. I don't know why. I absolutely love, I've been loving alocasias really of any kind, but of course Metalhead was such beautiful big leaves and the ability to get as big as these things get the like the up facing aspect of it i just love these really cool oh look at that cool okay at least we've got a good root system going down here so i don't feel super super guilty about repotting it already that makes me feel a little bit better what kind of mix am i going to do this time this time i'm going to do a pretty heavy mix actually let's just give it a google real quick and see what will make it happiest so we're going to do a well draining soil so moisture control or even the cactus would work so i'm going to do mostly moisture control then i'm going to take my cup and get a big cup full of this orchid bark so a pretty good amount of that orchid bark i'm going to mix in there then i'm going to get some cocoa choir and I'm gonna add some extra perlite as well. All right, that I'm happy with. Now let's start filling it up. So, I don't know why you guys, but work has been stressing me out really, really bad lately. I don't know what it is. I just, I've been feeling so uninspired lately. I think because I know in the back of my mind that ultimately my goal is to be full-time here on YouTube teaching you guys instead of the grind that I've already been doing for the last five years. It just takes a lot out of you. 
getting burnout as an artist is literally inevitable when you do it as much as you need to being a full-time stained glass artist. So I've just really kind of been battling that uninspired feeling. It's gone by fast. I've already been a full-time stained glass artist for five years. And like I often tell you guys, those first few years of being a stained glass artist, it was every day, all day. I didn't even take a day on the weekends. Like I said, it was so much so where it was a detriment to the relationships with the people in my life around me. I mean, granted now I've gotten better with it, but I'm just in this weird place because I want to do YouTube full time, but I kind of can't just jump into that right now. I need to still kind of do the restocks, but I'm feeling quite a bit uninspired by them because I've been forcing the creativity out for so long. So I don't know, like I said, I'm just in a weird spot. So I'm trying to just kind of figure that out and figure out what it is exactly that I want to do. Like I know I want to do stained glass for the rest of my life, but I'm tired of having to force out the creativity, if that makes sense. I love my job, I'm super passionate about it, but like I said, when you've been doing it as much and as long as I have been now, it takes a lot out of you to force it out 24 seven to every two weeks for the last five years four sell 30 pieces to sell. It's a lot. Okay, so my favorite plant right now is repotted and I think that's much, much happier. Definitely, I don't have to worry about this one falling over anymore. So once again, I'm going to thoroughly soak this guy and put him back in the plant room. Be right back. Okay, and for the soil for this one, I'm gonna do like one part orchid, one part soil, one part perlite, and one part cocoa choir. That should be good, heavy on the cocoa choir. All right, I don't know, you guys will have to let me know down below what you thought of this kind of video. Like I said, I didn't really think ahead of time at all on what I was gonna talk to you guys about. I should have done a and a so maybe that's what I'll ask you guys. So if you guys have any specific questions about me, my life, my work, any stained glass related questions, leave them in the comments below and I'll start saving up all of the comments for an upcoming Q&A. So maybe the next time I have to repot some plants, I'll also answer some of you guys' questions while I do it. But that's it, there's our last plant. I think she's always gonna be kind of hanging to the side like this, but at least now she won't fall out of the pot. So that's it for today's video, guys. Again, I'm going to absolutely soak this plant, let it drain out the bottom, then we'll put it away. So yeah, that's it for today's video, guys. As always, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, like this video if you did, comment down below, let me know what you wanna see next and your questions, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Get some mess in here.